folks and welcome to this hillbilly kitchen tip today we're going to talk about duty cycle for just a little while and i wanted to get this up close to christmas because most of us get new kitchen gadgets for christmas like this was christmas last year i got two of these babies this year and i got this one for christmas so oh, four or five years ago and this little hand blender here i've had for about 15 or 20 years i don't even remember when i bought it but we're going to use it for demonstration purposes now, what duty cycle is, is how long an electric motor can run before it gets so hot that you should shut it down and let it cool off in order to avoid damaging it. Now, if you run your mixer until you start to smell it, you are doing damage. If you run it until you see smoke, you are doing severe damage. And if you have a lot of smoke, it very well could never run again. And that's because so much heat has built up in the motor that it's burned the winding and it's just destroyed the motor. I mean, that's just what happens. It burns the oil out of the gears and the motor will seize up. But too much heat will completely destroy your electric motors. Now, this stand mixer sells for between two and three hundred dollars. It depends on where you buy it. Nowhere in this owner's manual does it say a word about duty cycle. But if I go out in the garage, we have a $65 drill press that has the duty cycle in the owner's manual. We also have a welder that's probably 50 years old. It has the duty cycle printed right on it. And a lot of other tools will have duty cycles printed on them or in the owner's manual. Even most hand drills will tell you what the duty cycle is when you buy them. Why in the world your kitchen appliances don't have that in the manual, I do not know. But um, a lot of things affect duty cycle. Now, like I said, this mixer will sell anywhere from two to three hundred dollars. This one here was about fifteen, I think. It was a Christmas special at Walmart. And there are a lot of differences that add up to that price. I think amperage-wise, these two mixers say that they have the same motor in them, but clearly they don't have the same motor in them. One of the things that they do to save money is if you look right here, you can see the size of the wire. The wire in the expensive mixer is much bigger than the wire that goes into the cheaper mixer. Now, bigger wire can handle more heat. And the wires in the motor in this mixer are much bigger than the wires in this motor. Also, the gears in this motor are better lubricated and they're smoother. And I can show you how I know that. You can tell that by the way they sound. The more expensive mixer, the cheaper mixer. Much louder. So this more expensive mixer with these smoother gears, more lubrication, bigger wire, I'm gonna be able to run it a lot longer without it overheating. Also, a big thing that affects heat buildup in electric motors is the air intake and exhaust. Now, on this one, the intake is up here under this plate and it's kind of protected. I have noticed that it does still tend to get a little bit of the dust from whatever I mix it in it. And the outlet is back here, the exhaust is back here. On this mixer, the intake is right here. It's right over where the beaters will go. And whenever I mix anything, it sucks it right up in here and it exhausts it back here. And usually, whatever I'm mixing, you will be able to see it on the exhaust when I'm done. Not just where it sucks it in, but back here too. Now, what that means is that everything I'm mixing is going into my motor because I seriously doubt this motor is sealed that well. And like sugar is very abrasive. So I'm getting sugar in my motor that's going to break it down. Well, they do that stuff because they only charge you $15 for this mixer and they want you to have to buy another one next year. Now, like I said, I've had this one probably for four or five years now and it still works fine. It still sounds about like it sounded when I got it. And that's what I'm going to show you with these is how they start to sound once the motors are damaged. But this one still sounds all right and it's fine. Now, if you use your mixer and you start to smell it, said you're getting to that point where you're doing damage. 
So in order to keep from damaging your motor and shortening the life, as soon as you start to smell it, turn it off. And you want to let it cool down. The, the rule generally is it cools down three times as long as you were running it. So if you were running it for five minutes, you let it sit for 15 minutes before you use it again. That makes sure your motor is completely cool and it's safe to turn it back on. You're not going to cause any damage. Now these two hand blenders here, like I said, I got this one this year. It's brand new. And this one I have had for 15, 20 years. I do not remember when I bought it. Um, oh, these are both the same brand. And I do like this brand. Their appliances tend to last pretty good. But listen to this. Okay, that motor is shot. That noise tells me that that motor is drawing way too many amps. It's straining to even turn and there's no load on it at all. It's going to overheat really, really quick. It's not going to give me the kind of force that I need to blend anything. Now this could potentially catch on fire after just a few minutes of use because obviously there's stuff in there grinding. There's no grease left in the motor, but after 20 years, they do tend to break down. An electric motor is not going to last for forever, but in a mixer like this, if you watch it and you don't exceed your duty cycle, you let it cool down when it gets hot, the motor in it and the windings on the motor in it and the gears in the motor in it, should you should actually be able to pass this down to your grandkids. So in the long run, buying an expensive mixer will save you money because you won't have to replace it every few years and you can't even pass it down if you take care of it. But these little things don't have giant motors in them. They're not going to put a great deal into them. But you can hear the difference here. Now that's what this should sound like and that's what it used to sound like. It's fairly quiet. You don't hear anything grinding. It's smooth. It's probably turning four or five times as fast because it's not worn out. All the gears are still good in it and I haven't overheated it yet. <laughs> Heat buildup is a big problem and like this, there's no inlet for air and there is no outlet. So that means this is going to have a fairly short duty cycle. And I was reading the reviews on this one before Christmas and some woman had said that she bought it for soap making and after 15 minutes of continuous use it started to smoke where the handle meets the case. Well this is a hand blender. It doesn't even turn on. You hold the button for the amount of time you want to use it. It's not intended to run for 15 straight minutes. It's intended to make a milkshake or puree a pot of soup or something. Maybe at the most you would run this three to five minutes under a light load. And load also affects duty cycle. The heavier the load you have on the motor, the more uh, tension is on the motor, the more resistance on the motor, the quicker it's going to heat up. Now if I put the whisk on this mixer and I'm whipping whipped cream for example, I could leave this mixer running for hours and it would not get hot because there's no resistance. The, the motor's spinning free, there's nothing holding it back, but if I put the dough hook on it and I'm mixing dough, my duty cycle is going to be considerably shorter, probably no, no more than five minutes even on this big mixer with a heavy duty motor and heavy wire. So when you're using your appliances, keep an eye on them touch them. If they start to feel hot, uh, turn them off. I mean, certainly if the case on this gets hot enough for me to feel it, it's exceeded the duty cycle. Uh, if you smell it, turn it off, let it cool down, and it'll make all your appliances, even the ones that you just paid a few dollars for, last much, much longer. That hand blender that sounds horrible now, I only paid ten dollars for that. And ten dollars for an appliance that will last for 20 years, that's pretty darn good. So I hope this helps extend the life of your appliances. And thanks for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave and we'll see you next time.